we should start by showing you the new part, and then I'll show you the old part. So the, the new part, there's a little groove there, fits in right like that. And I've already put this in, I'm going to back that out actually. And the new part requires, on the top, uh, by the way, sometimes um, this will have a little ridge on it. So I'll clean that off a little bit so it sits nice and flush, like that. By the way, you might see me use these. These are called chevives. It's a cool little rotary tool that allows you to uh, clean out the edges a little bit. Watch your fingers. It is sharp. That's kind of cool, or you can just use an X-Acto knife and do that. Uh, when these things print, I think I covered this before, but when these print, they print flat surface down, and the first few layers end up being uh, squished down really tightly and very solid, so you get a lot of material on those bottom layers, and um, you get a little ridge, which always bugs me. So uh, you can clean that up like that, get yourself some fancy leaves, if you want to use that guy, or some people might want to really get into it, make it very pretty, hit it with a file. You don't need much, so you can clean up that edge there. So it's it's relevant here because you don't want your edge, as this little ridge demonstrates, you don't want that to be high and then this fit caddy corner on it a little bit, caddy wampus technical term. Whoops. So uh, on the uh, the new part, um, you only, you don't need you don't need a screw that long. A one inch screw will actually work. We've countersunk it here. Whenever possible, I try not to use um, try not to use washers. So that's countersunk to the proper depth, and it'll go together like this. Okay. I'll get to the bearings here in a second. So that's going to go on like that. The bottom one is going to go on like that. Now, I, I didn't show you, but this guy's a little bit of a bear to get in there. you got to kind of pop it in, use a little strength to get that guy in. This one is very loose. So we'll put this together in just a second, but I wanted to illustrate with this piece. This is the X-carriage, and this is the extruder mount. Kind of a neat design because uh, we're going to do other tools um, for mounting on this, so I wanted to keep it as unobstructed as I can, so that's why we we not only have a two-part piece because this prints a lot better like this than it would like that, um, but we're going to have other tool mounts here. So if you have different extruders with different requirements, um, even though this is flush, uh, you, you have room this way, you might want to poke it out further, whatever you want to do. So it's a pretty flexible little design, um, but on the retrofit, if you're going to mount this guy and this, uh, what happens is it ends up adding some thickness and you can't use the countersink. So you're going to want a longer screw to reach the carriage. So I'll just demo that real quick. Let me <coughs> drill this out a little bit. Woo! Yeah. Well, that didn't help much. So, where am I going? It's going to go in like that. There it went. And now the same carriage will work there. I think that's long enough. Yeah, I just barely grabbed it. So, functionally, and then of course the other, other one, functionally the retrofit works identical to the new one, just with a little more material, two parts instead of one, but it ends up putting the position in the exact same spot so that um, it will trigger this end stop properly when you get your, your little guy in there, so your screw. So that's that. Um, I think that's the last little retrofit end stop improvement we've made. Uh, but I tell you, you know, when I built my Prusa, the end stops confounded me, man. They moved all over the place. Um, it was kind of a bear and it was ugly. So I think this is a really elegant solution. Now, uh, 
I'll just pop this together so it bites on that screw just a little bit. Okay. Now, let's talk about this X carriage. Done with that. So, a um, couple things. Number one, um, I wanted to make the printer bot as small as possible. And so, it's quite narrow. Um, in fact, it's only what you need to get uh, full access to the 6x6 six six bed. Okay. So, as this moves left and right across this print bed, um, you know, you got a you got a hot end. Where's my hot end? We'll get to the extruder and all that in a second, but you got a hot end that hangs down. And that hot end is going to um, deposit your stuff. Now, your uh, ABS or your PLA. To move it all the way to the edge is a little bit impractical, I must say, because um, the the temperature on the edges, and in fact, across the bed, you'll get a little variance in temperature. Um, but as you move it across all the way to the edge and try to get all the way over here and try to get that full width, you know, here in America we use inches, so we got six inches there, 150, what, 154 millimeters, and yeah, it's pretty square. So to say it's a six by six inch bed is true. You can print on all of this. You got some holes here to deal with. If you got glass on the top, no problem. Um, sometimes you really run to the edge, but um, honestly, I print in the center a lot because my parts aren't exactly six long. I mean, you could lay something across here this way. But the reason I bring this up is um, I made this very, very thin, and a lot of the uh, other printers will use more than two of these. Well, we designed this, go in from this side, by the way, this is the smooth side. It prints like that, remember, with the ridges. So it's a little easier to insert these down from the top. So I got the bottom one in there, flush. Now when I tighten this screw, it's going to cinch that in and hold this in place. So we could indeed, um, as it was designed, use two, you know, it's a very thin profile. You're not using a lot of your, um, there we go. You're not using uh, much of your, your bar here to eat up it with bearings. It's very thin. So it gives you the maximum amount of travel across this bed. Well, that's, that works. And if you want 100% use of the left and right on the, on, on the x-axis, um, use two. But I'm going to throw in one extra bearing to your kit, and you're going to end up with the option to do three bearings on this carriage, and I'll show you how that works. I find, you know, these bearings are, are pretty nice, but if you really give close examination, there's a very slight wobble. It's even hard to see. I don't even feel any wobble on that one, but some of these bearings, there's just a little wobble. Um, there, I feel it now. I haven't even cinched these bearings down tight yet, but um, just, there's a little bit of wobble, right? Well, if you want to kind of go the extra mile, use that last bearing. What I recommend is push this bearing through. There's no ridges to hold it unless it's just the print edge holding it. But you can push this through. Let's see if I can do it. There it goes. Uh, it's kind of tight even. Okay. There we go. So uh, even that out. And then when you cinch this guy down, is it grabbing? Oh, you know what? After I get those bearings in there, huh. try to push it out. There we go. Was a little tight. Okay, so that was a one inch screw. Let me use one and a quarter. Kind of stretched it a little bit too far with those bearings in there. It sticks out a little bit, but that's what we're going to go with. Okay. 
So when you cinch these down, even though I was able to push those in, um, you want to cinch this down pretty good. Now you don't want to over torque this, but now that it's tight, these bearings are not coming out. So you've got one, and by the way, you could put even four if you wanted. We could have four across the bottom. We could do a double here and here, but that's really overkill. Um, in some ways problematic. There's no real benefit. Um, just the one on the bottom is fine. So then you'll end up with an orientation like this. I'm going to hit that camera <laughs> with my head. Now this is uh, very, very key. You saw, you know, it was so easy to in insert one with it all free like this. But be careful when you insert this with the two because it's, it's going to be not exactly you know straight across and you don't want to push out these little bearings on the end if you get any uh, resistance at all don't just shove it in these guys have little itty bitty bearings inside I don't know if you can see them but there's little itty bitty bearings inside you do not want that you don't want to pop out those bearings so I'm very very dainty with it here alright so that goes through this goes through and I recommend you mount this first uh, onto the bars before you slide it into the the ends here and so I'll go ahead and demonstrate that so these guys again uh, you may want to clean these out um, on the very top layer sometimes it'll sag a little bit so you might want to clean that out um, these are exactly eight millimeter rods uh, metric stuff is a little harder to get in the US um, you want this to fit as tight as you can uh, without cracking anything so if you shove in super hard, you know, there's not a lot of material here, so uh, be careful. I've, I've pre-drilled these, so they're going in real nice. And, you know, it's just hand tight. I can pull these out if I need to. Um, when we get the belt on and when we get it on the bars, it's going to really hold it all together. And, yeah, there's a little give, but it all kind of comes out in the wash. It's all, all the problems kind of go away. But I just wanted to illustrate that it's very, very solid now. There's no rock at all. But what happens is you're going to give up some distance. See how it hits the end here? You're going to have to move your screw in further, and you're going to have to be okay with giving up, what is that? Um, that's a half inch. You're going to give up a half inch on each side, end up with a sturdier machine with the, because uh, there's going to be a lot of weight on this. And you know, sticking out, and you, you know, I li I run mine with uh, three bearings, um, but if you want to get all the space, you know. So anyway, that's that. So it goes in like that. 